Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and join with me in our pledge to our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will you pray with me? Father, we do thank you for our country, and we thank you for th this day as we've uh, voted uh, our thoughts and our opinions uh, for the next president. And we do ask your guidance and direction as a nation as we put a new leader in uh, as leader of our nation. Thank you, Father, for the privileges that we have. Thank you for the blessings that we have. We thank you for our community here and for all the things that we enjoy. Thank you for this uh, group of men and women as they lead us and guide us and, and direct our, our community to a better place. We ask your blessing upon it tonight. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Don. Yeah. Now call to order our Guthrie Public Works Authority meeting of March 1st. Uh, the second item on the agenda is a consent agenda, only one item, uh, consent agenda item number A, which is the approval of the last uh, Public Works Authority meeting, February 16th. So moved. Second. 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 There's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Submit your vote, please. Let's see the vote. Unanimous approval of those minutes, and that being the only item on the agenda for the Public Works Authority. That uh, meeting is adjourned, and I now call to order our City Council meeting of March 1st. Second item is public comments, community announcements, and recognition. We have one public comment. Uh, Mr. Wallach. Yes. Dave, if you'd go over there to the Certainly. microphone, state your name, and... Um, okay. And make it brief, will you? <laughs> well, I think you're going to see that. For all of you that don't know me, my name is Dave Wallach. I used to be the former postmaster here. I live in Crescent, Oklahoma. I'm the event chairman of the 89ers, and uh, I work with the American Legion. I'm the second vice. Basically, what I brought, uh, my wife has emailed three of you, uh, Bruce and Jeff and, and uh, Steve, the broken arrow on your municipal code, what we're trying to do is, uh, the broken arrow's municipal code is what I've, what I've got here. And basically what it does is it stops people from selling anything unless they have a permit for any of the events, okay? Unless you're a 501c3. So like if churches or anything like that, as long as they've got a 501c3, they're allowed to do it. So we're hoping that you would consider this and implement it in your, uh, in the Guthrie's municipal code, because at this point in time, there isn't anything. And I have, now that I took over the event chairman for Mr. Steve over there, uh, there were some complaints that you've got vendors that pay and you've got other people that just come through with wagons and sell things anywhere throughout the whole event. And so what we're trying to do is put a moratorium on that where they've got to be within 200, they can't be within 250 feet of the event uh, unless, again, they're a church or anything like that. We have no problem with them as long as they're a 501c3. Okay? Any questions on that part of it? Is this for uh, April 23rd, just that day? Is that what we're talking about? Uh, probably, yeah. That's the main day. Well, you'd have to make it for every event. Yeah. You can't just do it You're for one. That's right. pretty biased. <laughs> well, I mean, but you can say for that day versus specifically. I mean, because the events are all, you know, there's different types of events. Correct. During the week. Um, Basically, since selling. that whole thing is, a, is uh, five days, I would probably say for that event it would be five days. Everything else that you do, the territorial Christmas, those type of things, they're basically there for a day or two, and that would be it. But uh, the whole thing is just to prevent people from just coming in and selling their wares and not having paid anything for it. Any other questions about that one? How, yes, sir. How do you identify the event? It's 250 feet from the event. How do you what identify the event? Well, like in this case on the 89ers is the only main thing I'm going to speak of is where they start the parade. 
and where it finishes off. And the whole route in between? Mm hmm Because that's where everybody's mainly going to be. So basically they couldn't be on Oklahoma. Correct. They'd have to be on the other side of the, sh the other street coming around on Cleveland. And then the other thing I've got for you is the uh, the event permit that Guthrie now has. Um, the way that it's set up, every time you have an event, someone has to go up and down to all the different businesses, homeowners, and everything else where anything is going to be and ask for permission. And they have to get written permission that they're allowing them to go forward with closing the streets or whatever's necessary. My question to you is that uh, you look at that for the four events, the 89er Parade, the Territorial Christmas, Martin Luther King Day, and Veterans Day, that you waive those four from that so people don't have to go up and down the streets uh, and talk to all of the people. In my opinion, and I'm going to leave it at that, in my opinion, it's kind of a ridiculous rule anyway, because you're asking the people, you know, would you allow it? Now, I don't know how you all are, but I'm from Chicago. And if somebody asked me, would I allow an event to go on? And if I said no, I'd expect it not to go on. However, the way it works here, you're still going to do it. So why even ask me? I mean, to me, it's a ridiculous situation. We tried going up and down the streets and getting everybody <clears throat> to sign off on it. And if somebody says no, technically, you can't do anything about it. Then you couldn't have the parade. Well, in my opinion, that's a ridiculous situation. So at least for those four, my, my thought was that you would implement that. So we tried to have the uh, Veterans Day parade. We had a change of guard over at the American Legion. And on Friday afternoon, we found out at 1 o'clock that we needed a permit for the, for the Veterans Parade. We didn't know that, so we tried running around getting everybody to sign it, and the Blue Bell wasn't there. Uh, it was owned by a different person in California. And then when we finally got an okay, we brought it over here, and they said it would take a day or two to process. Well, then the parade was over with. So when we did the, uh, the parade, we had a mar march about 50 feet, and then we had the parade right there in front of the Blue Bell because we didn't get the permits. However, there was another organization in this situation that didn't get the permit, but they were allowed to do their march. So to me, it's kind of a ridiculous thing. Uh, you can keep it if you want, but I would recommend at least those four major ordeal, those four major parades that you waive that so somebody doesn't have to run around and, and go I through that. Yeah. Any questions? We've done that forever. So, As I understand that, the <laughs> running around signing is not necessarily a permission, it's just informative unless it has changed since I ran around and got signing. For well, it, 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 it specifically is, uh, says in there, do you, are you in agreement with it or not? And if they're not, it's not. It's just letting them know that it's going to happen and just inform them. That's why I always understood it wasn't asking permission. It was just letting them know that this was going to happen and they signed off that, okay, we know it's going to happen. They could say they didn't like it, but that wasn't in, that really had no bearing. It was just an informative thing that it was going to happen is what I understand that signing was for. Okay, as a business owner, if, yeah. if I came to you and said, we're going to do this, do you mind? And you said, no, I don't. And we said, okay, thanks, well, you're, but we're going to do it. Okay, well, then that means, well, your objection is duly noted and move on to the next person, and that's about all. Well, what's the reason for the asking everybody in the first place? It wasn't asking, it's a telling. It's just, that what it is, just that, it's just an informative thing. It's not asking. Well, but people. we can inform it by putting it in the paper. I mean, people know that those four different events are being held. Right. I guess they need but to, to know be running around is like an exercise in paperwork. Yeah. Well, <coughs> we, we don't need to be debating that now. No, yeah. but, I'm, but, just, uh, no. I'm, I'm just saying it up. that's what but, I understood. That the, yeah. well, that, when do we talk right. about it? Workshop. Either at workshop? workshop. Okay. Okay. We'll talk about it on our next workshop, okay. next council meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Thank you. Dave. The uh, third item on the agenda is the consent agenda, items A through D. Uh, a is uh, 
approval of the minutes from the city council workshop. B is approval of minutes from the last regular city council meeting. C is uh, approval of a waiver for rental fee for the mineral wells for the Guthrie Up Upper Elementary School. Uh, and D is uh, approval of a change order two extending the contract with C4L 29 days for the pilot's lounge at the airport. So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion on those four items? <clears throat> Please submit your vote. I'll Let's see the vote. Uh, it is. That's a yes. I'm, I'm not sure. We're having technical on. difficulty yeah. end on this end. Okay. Uh, let the <laughs> let the minutes reflect that <laughs> that Mr. Thomas's vote is a is a yes. There was a malfunction. Uh, in the system, it was unanimous vote to approve those four items on the consent agenda. Agenda item number four, discussion, possible action, a resolution 2016-01 uh, to uh, waive the ordinance concerning the uh, multiple sclerosis bike event September 21 through 25 at Highland Park. Uh, staff comments? Same event that took uh, place last year, same waiver that would have been last year. So duplication of... Uh, previous year services. So moved. Second. So this is for the park to remain open as well as uh, consumption of uh, beer. alcohol or yep. beer, mm -hmm. of beer uh, during that time. Any other discussion? Submit your vote, please. All votes, right? Let's see the vote. Unanimous approval of uh, that resolution uh, to, um, to waive uh, the, the part of the ordinance uh, to allow the multiple sclerosis spike. Uh, event. Item number five, discussion and possible action of ordinance 3284, uh, increasing the number of library board members from five to seven. Why are we doing that out of curiosity? Uh, I think Suzette, we come have, on up. Let's answer some questions that. here for us. <laughs> Suzette, would you uh, mind telling us the rationale? Good evening, everyone. Uh, the rationale is we have several board members that are slowly transitioning out, and they have been on the board for several years, and I don't want to lose their wisdom. At the same time, there are new candidates that I think would be great, and so this would be an opportunity for the older ones to transition out and provide all their wisdom and knowledge as the new ones come in. So will it inevitably be back to five, or will it stay at seven? I, it'll stay at seven. Are the terms staggered? Yes. Mm -hmm. I assume. Okay. They can't work so, alongside them and get some experience before they're appointed. I mean, uh, that is what, an what, option. What I was told is we had more more nominees than we had spots for, and that uh, we just thought we should use them. And I, I don't think that's a good idea. I, I think uh, you know every time we have too many volunteers, we grow every board we have. And that doesn't make sense to me. So I'm still not understanding why we would want to do this when you could groom them right alongside them without giving them a board position, teach them what it's about before they're actually making votes. I will state this, that they're not guaranteed a board position until they've been approved by city council, though. That's correct. Any other? The, the terms are, uh, th are they three-year terms? I think they vary between two and three. Two and three. Mm -hmm. But they all, it, it's a rotational, so they're that not all going off at the same time. That is staggered. Uh, so you have that uh, opportunity, if you will. We've just, uh, I think we just uh, approved one uh, new member not too long ago. Because mm -hmm. we had a vacancy. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, how do we, <clears throat> how do we come up with the... Obviously, I wasn't on council when all the boards and commissions happened. How do we come up with the number of volunteers per board? Is there a formula? Uh, did we just say one day library needs five, board of adjustment needs six, this one needs seven? How do I mean? Is no, there it's just as if the, when the, the charter was set, it was made by the decision makers at that point in time that we have seven council members. So whatever ordinance passed, it was passed by that council. Uh, given the directive of how many Throughout people were to set on that on set on that board or commission. Some are statutory, but most yep. are just up to you. So I get a question. How is he, how easy is it to find folks who want to be part of the board? For the library board, yeah. it has not been as easy as I was hoping it would be. So we're going to make it tougher for you to Facebook. fill in. 
No. Or seven versus five? No, I don't think it will be tougher. It's just more of an investment. Okay. Other questions? Well, my experience with bigger boards has not been good. I, I have a board of 15. It's like herding cats. And uh, <laughs> I would agree. Uh, I would think 15 well, would, would be think a little complicated. Seven is probably more difficult than five. And I would I, I said something to someone else that uh, uh, if you need some evidence, just look at your U.S. Congress, how big it is and how little they get done. So I, I'm not in favor of growing the, this just to train people. I mean, they can still get their job. They can learn along the side and still volunteer and do things and learn as in the same place they're at. Suzette, and I appreciate I, them doing that too. Suzette, would a volunteer that's on the board feel more invested by having the opportunity to vote on the policies and procedures of the library other than just being a volunteer? I think so. Okay. But you just said they don't know what they're doing. The new one, <laughs> the new no. <laughs> so that's why it would be better to teach them more about what's going on before they actually get a vote. I mean, we don't let 12 year olds vote, in, except in Chicago. <laughs> Sorry, Ed. <laughs> well, I think part of the point is, though, that there is a there is a certain commitment that one has if they feel uh, that their investment is reflected actually in a in a voting process. Correct. Um, that they have more of a formal uh, voice in right. the policies, procedures, things that the that the library board is, is taking into consideration. And a side note, uh, the not this. The last, the first board meeting, we couldn't get quorum because we didn't have enough people. That's mm -hmm. another benefit of having seven. Because they just weren't showing up. Correct. So you're going to have more, and it's going to be easier to get a quorum. Correct. Well, this is one thing that I've always wanted to discuss in um, in a workshop. Anyway, was the number of headcount per boards, uh, how we came up with them, are they effective? Uh, you know, how many times do they not have a quorum uh, in that type scenario? And we just have not got around to that in a workshop at this point, and I think that, that it should be, my opinion. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, thank you very much. I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the ordinance which would amend the library board members from five to seven. Is there a motion? No motion, no action, no action taken. Um, and I would take it that it, with no action taken that there is not a vacancy uh, for item number six. Correct, correct. So no action taken on item number six either. Number seven, discussion possible action concerning ordinance 3285. Uh, which is uh, actually keeping in line with our increase, uh, recently voted increase in sales tax, uh, the uh, excise tax moving from three uh, to three and three quarter percent of the purchase price. Um, I'll uh, entertain a motion in a but second. What, what is staff explanation on okay. this? Okay, staff. Yeah. Uh, currently, we have a uh, use tax that is equal to our sales tax. Uh, our sales tax will be increasing July 1st of this year. Uh, we have the ability per state statutes to increase the use tax to mirror that uh, percent, same percentage uh, from 3% to 3.75% in this case uh, in order to get that uh, ordinance passed and implemented after the 90 days of it uh, staying dormant before execution uh, uh, to start July 1st. Uh, we're just asking that um, this ordinance be passed to amend the original ordinance setting uh, the use tax at 3% to go to 3.75% come July 1st. Can you explain uh, for folks what the use tax is? Use tax is goods that are purchased outside the state of Oklahoma and brought back into the state of Oklahoma at that point in time. Uh, the use tax is directly proportional to the sales tax for that particular item. So how do you monitor that? Oklahoma Tax Commission monitors it. So like if, if Steve, our mayor, bought a TV online, he would owe 3.75% of that TV to the to the city correct or if I bought again this is for the Oklahoma Tax Commission not the, the city of Guthrie regardless of what the item is or where it's purchased 
Is this focused online transactions? No, uh, there's a lot of oil and natural gas uh, products too. I think the principle of what you're trying to do here is right, but I don't think we understand that tax very well. <laughs> I think we're trying to level it off with the sales tax makes sense, but I'm not sure that we understand how we ever collect anything from it. Do we? Yes, we collect, uh, this year we budgeted 185000 We expect collections to be closer to 240000 uh, You guys have collected as much as 300 and some odd thousand dollars um, um, in use tax. I think that was in 2014. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a very significant amount of money that's collected. Uh, you guys probably implemented it just because of the way that you guys were structured um, in your sales tax before and needing additional funds just to operate the city. Uh, from my um, review of your guys' budget, uh, you guys are needing that in your general fund uh, just to make good each and every year. So, Do you, do you have a sense, Bruce, uh, what are items that would be examples that – or do we have analysis of what people are buying that are – like the no, you have to get that one from the open no tax commission. Even if you did at that point in time, it would be private. Okay. I'd make a motion to approve it. I'll second. second. That. Yeah. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, I have a first question. <clears throat> I know it's private to know what companies, but we could we not know what products? We have a sense of what is being bought. Well, I can ask the Oklahoma Tax Commission for their SIC codes, but I haven't received one in the 20 years that I've been doing it. I don't think I've ever asked for it either. So okay. that'd be a first. For me, but I'd be more than happy to ask for an SIC. Maybe code. ask just the just the types of goods, not necessarily what companies or anything. Just so no, that's what right. they come in our SIC codes. Okay, that'd be great if you could check that out. Yeah. And of course, the whole issue of buying online is a significant one for uh, cities across our state uh, because of the sales tax implication. And um, I know from the uh, standpoint of some. Uh, programs that I've been involved with with the Oklahoma Municipal League, they are trying to work through the state legislature to bring more teeth into that as to how that is tracked, how it's trackable, uh, and um, to be able to accomplish that. Uh, but that's still a huge, huge issue. Uh, and as, uh, as technology increases, it's going to continue to be. And the, and the legislature's not really on our, in our favor in trying to have not been, in it. Have so. not been, have not been, significantly vocal and strong in that in that issue they, they see it as a tax increase so they don't want to touch it but, yeah. i don't know the rationale exactly but yeah. i know that they haven't uh, that's what the oml says so. we have a motion and a second yeah. uh, any further discussion submit your vote please I'll vote, right? see the votes unanimous uh, approval for the adoption of ordinance 3285 City manager report. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> uh, council comments or uh, or other things to add to the goodness of the order. Uh, Councilman John Wood. Um, I have nothing time. Okay. Councilman Bothroyd. Yeah. Um, it, we had a good event at the chamber uh, for those that attended that. It was. Uh, I thought it was something special. First time I'd been to that, and uh, I, it was very enlightening. And uh, that's it for me. Councilman Thomas. I don't really have anything to add. Okay. Thanks. Councilwoman Padgett. I really have nothing to say. Thank you. Councilman Taylor. I'll just echo what Councilman uh, Bothroyd said. It was a great time that night, and uh, uh, it was good to see a lot of people show up, and it looks like the, the, you know, the chamber's moving right along and starting to grow, and that's great. So... Uh, and 89ers will be here in about, what, 45 days or so. Mm -hmm. So uh, be ready for that. Okay. Councilman Edward. Well, I'd like to also echo Councilman Bothroyd. That was a great event. Uh, chamber did really well. Was a lot of good people were recognized. I'm glad they all were able to do that. Uh, I hope everybody got out to vote and uh, uh, show their opinion today. And hopefully that some of the things that we had on ours passed. So. Hopefully, we're looking for that for better economic development here in Guthrie. So at that point, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Who won the Chicago Cemetery District? Uh, <laughs> good question. Come on, Ed. You're from Chicago. Well, you know there's a lot of people <laughs> famous. Seems to be, seems to be some Remember Chicago the, thread yeah. here uh, tonight. Yeah. yeah. Um, they voted two or three times. They vote early, vote often. You know, that's a, <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, 
Uh, again, as a number of uh, the councilmen have, have mentioned, uh, congratulations to uh, Superintendent Mike Simpson uh, as a, a citizen of the year. Um, and uh, Mercy Hospital as a business of the year. Uh, I know I'm leaving some out, uh, but uh, they recognized uh, our Verla Lorraine's as volunteer of the year. Evelyn Nephews. And Evelyn Nephews as uh, leader, leadership of the year. Lifetime achievement. Lifetime, Lifetime achievement, thank you. And the teacher of the year. And the teacher of the and year the was a great one. Yes. Uh, uh, Karen, I don't remember her Kara. last. Kara Walters. Kara Walters. Walters. Uh, yes, great people representing our community uh, and uh, certainly, surely deserving of the recognition. And uh, the chamber banquet was probably the biggest one that they've had in, uh, in recent memory. Uh, great job by the Job Corps. And again, uh, great recognition so, to people that contribute significantly to our community in many, many ways. So congratulations and thank you uh, to all of them. You know, that's another thing on the Job Corps. Uh, they do, I've been to several different of their functions and uh, they're always top notch and, and do it first class. They do, they do a superb job, superb job. Item number 10, uh, consideration to approve or to uh, convene to executive session for so two items. Uh, one is the initiative petition and the other one is a, a discussion concerning uh, city manager. Second. There's been a motion and a second, any further discussion? Submit your vote, please. I'll vote See the votes. Unanimous approval to convene to executive session.